All right, and uh, welcome to this video. We're just going to finish off where we started. We had a little bit of practice uh, previously of if I give you a position time graph to make a written description, a motion map, and a velocity time graph out of it. Now we're going to reverse it a bit. And what if we're given a velocity time graph? So how do you do all this stuff from a velocity time graph? Well, one big change is when we look at this information, Typically, when I start the written description, the first thing I write down is where I'm starting. Well, when I'm looking at the velocity time graph, I see that to begin with, the velocity is some fairly large negative value, so it's moving in the negative direction rather quickly. And then, all of a sudden, it changes directions, and it's moving in the positive. So here's positive, here's negative. Now it's moving in the positive direction, rather slowly because it's not far from zero uh, but nowhere does it tell me where it starts so this information is not given so we have to make a, a decision about how we're going to draw this where shall we decide to start the object so it's not given to us but we can't do it without that information well if it's moving in a negative direction quickly for a while and then later on it's moving in a positive direction but not as quickly it's going to have to move in the negative direction quite far so if this is our origin and this is in the positive direction we better start somewhere you know somewhere over here because it's going to be moving in the negative direction quite a bit and only in the positive direction a little bit so we're going to decide so we can say let's decide to start uh, at a positive point so that we don't end up going to the left of the motion map. I don't know, we could we could start at the origin but then we'd have to go and and build it to the negative direction and you know what it might just get a little bit messy on here so let's just decide to do that okay uh, and then if we do our familiar and say segment one segment two and segment three like that we could say okay so for segment number one it's moving in the negative okay moves quickly in the negative direction and then between one and two it actually changes direction uh, and it moves slowly in the positive direction how would I know that well closer to the origin is slow farther from the origin is fast so uh, farther in the positive direction is quickly in the positive direction farther in the negative is quickly in the negative direction so that that's how the slowly and quickly works part three stopped not moving okay so uh, how would the motion map look here I've got this thing moving in the negative direction quite quickly and then all of a sudden it changes directions uh, like this and then it changes directions so my next dot uh, if it's changing directions I'm gonna do the like if I put the next one here and make it change directions and I have to draw my vector area arrow to the right it you know kinda gets in the way so I'm gonna do the drop down to make more space and so this is segment number one moving in the negative direction quickly negative because the arrows are pointing in the negative direction which happens to be the, to the left uh, quickly because the arrows are long and now I need to move to the right more slowly so I'll draw my arrows in as well and then at the end the, the final segment is that it doesn't move at all Maybe I need to make some more space. There we go. Okay, now does that help us make my position time graph? Well, I'm going to start, you know, fairly far in the positive direction. So I'll start up here maybe. And I need to move in the negative. I have to get quite significantly smaller. So well, I'm going to try to draw a better line than that. So I have to draw a straight line maybe like this. And then all of a sudden I change directions and move in the positive direction, but not so quickly, so it's not as steep. And then I stay still for a while. 
So something like that. All right, are you ready for it? I think it's uh, time for the your turn. Uh, maybe I'll just give you a suggestion, first of all, uh, about where to start. It looks like you're going to be stopped for a while. You're going to be moving in a positive direction rather quickly for a while, and then in a negative direction slowly. So for the first part about the start, again, uh, there's not there's no information given, right? So uh, start uh, info not given. So you can decide. So let's start. I'm going to say you can start this one at the origin. So in other words, this will be your starting point here. This will be your starting point here. Okay. So, and then you can do segment one, segment two, and segment three. Uh, give that a try and hit pause now, and then come back and we'll see how you did. All right, so here's what I get. Uh, like I said, I said, <laughs> like I said, I said, start at the origin. So here's the start. Uh, the first segment was stopped. Uh, then was quickly, and I even, there's some numbers here. We can actually put the numbers. Quickly means two meters per second in this case for two seconds because it goes from zero to two. And then the third segment, it moves slowly in the negative direction for four seconds, slowly because it's only minus one, not two. Uh, and it's going for four seconds because it goes from four to eight. So in terms of the motion map, I start at the origin, and the first thing I need to do is to wait for two seconds. So if I if I count the jumps, um, here's the here's you know one second goes by, and two seconds or sorry one second goes by, two second goes by, and then it starts moving, and when it starts moving, it's moving at two meters per second. So it moves two meters for every second. So it was at zero then it moves to 2, and then it moves to 4. So you see it gets to 4. I drop down 1 because at 4 is when we change directions, and now we start moving in the negative direction at 1 meter for every second. So now we're going uh, a second later. We're at 3, and then we're at 2, and then we're at 1, and we're there for 4 seconds. So let me count the jumps. Here's 1 jump, 2 jumps, 3 jumps, 4 jumps. So isn't that neat? In this one, if we choose to start at the origin, we also end at the origin. If we would have chosen to say start at three, we would have you know, this whole piece here, this this whole segment would just get shifted over to the right, and it would we would end up where we started. So the position time graph, the xt graph, since we decided to start at the origin, that's where we start, and since we're not moving for the first sec two seconds, it's just level, and then we uh, suddenly move quickly. So this would be at four and then we move back down to zero again. Um, this would be four because this is four over here. Um, I hope you did all right. If not, you can always ask me some questions in class. Uh, look forward to seeing you again.